thought I would, I don't know, this rather dark story come to mind. I don't know, it, I'll warn you right now, it's got some, um, it's, it's a tragedy. It's a very tragic, uh, very tragic uh, story. And I don't know if it was just a massive coincidence, massive coincidence, something psychic on my part. That was one or the other. But either, either way you slice it, this is a massive tragedy. And I don't want to get right into it with this beautiful drive here. Can't really see it, but I did scrub my windows this time. For you. Oh, it's a beautiful area I live in here in central New York. Winters are challenging. Our New York State government at times is challenging. Everything changes. I'd like to say I just, I'll just outlast it, but it, it, we've had a kind of a corrupt government here, in my opinion, for quite a while. Long time. But I love the state. And as much as I go on about France, I love France quite a bit. The nature here is very beautiful. Not to take away from what we have here. I don't want you to get nervous thinking I'm not looking both ways. All right, I'll get on to this dark story. And I warn you, I don't know what you're going to make of it. Because I'll tell you right now, since it happened, when it happened, up till present, I don't know what to make of it. So me and my friend, we we're both about 14. You know, innocent. There's no internet, nothing, really. We have BB guns and comic books. Played in our imaginations. And the woods and the creeks. And uh, that was, and we went to church and school and sports. And nothing to do with the internet. It didn't exist then. It didn't exist. So I'm just trying to create the setting here. That we had a place we called a fort. Everything's a fort when you're a teenager. But really it was a place we built that we camped out in. And our parents would let us camp out. We even went out there in the middle of winter and camped. And our, our parents were fine with it. And uh, this was in upstate New York, up by Lake Ontario, where I used to live, up by Sodas Point. So we're hiking out to our fort, which really was pretty impressive considering we built it. It had uh, bunks. It had a wood-burning stove that we found in a dump, and we dragged it up and down hills and got it out to our, really, it was like a bunkhouse on top of a little hill. We were hiking out there one day, probably to work on it. And we had to go around, we had to take a long way around. Hold on. The view, huh? View, view break. Somebody's summer home. Man, I wish it was my year round home. So, there weren't many houses, it's a rural area, but there was one house on the way to our fort that we had to avoid, because this house, these people here, I didn't know them at all, um, they had some mean dogs, I mean, as I recall, they were German Shepherds, or like German Shepherds, window up, and these dogs would come after us, and they didn't like... In the old days, nobody chained their dogs up or they just let them run. So we had to go quite a ways out of our way to get to our fort because every time we tried to go straight through, this, these people's dogs would come after us. And, uh, and they were big enough that it was concerning. 
So, this is what happened. We're both walking there, middle of summer, 14 years old, innocent. We didn't do any drugs or didn't do anything. Very innocent. And both believed in God, went to church, you know, but whatever. And I just recall, we got, you know, out of our way, we bypassed that house with the mean dogs, and there were no other houses to speak of around that house, just that one, rural area. And I just said, now, I, I'm sorry to belay this again. I want you to understand that my friend and I played Army a lot, and played just games like comic book stuff like you know I'm the we just had fun with it or we role played like you know he's the the general and I'm the private or you know I'm the good guy bad guy kids playing we did that back then before the internet so when I what I'm about to tell you what I said I didn't mean it with any malice it was just part of a game we played and uh just suddenly I remember we're walking and I said I want you to blow that house up I was talking about that house that we had to by bypass I told my friend I've, I've got a mission for you I want you to blow that house up and as soon as I said the words blow that house up there was a boom boom and the house was about a half mile away from us maybe less maybe a quarter to a half mile away you couldn't see it because we were walking through woods and uh, apple orchards. So we couldn't see the house at all. But as soon as I said the words, blow that house up, there was a boom, boom. Significant boom, boom. Kind of a dull, but sort of shockwave. Boom, boom. And we both just paused there, I remember, and I just looked at him and said, wow. And yeah, wow. And then we kept walking. And the next day, I guess it was the next day or whenever we got back to our if same day, I don't recall what we did after that, if we camped out or went back home, found out that that house blew up. Right when I said, I want you to blow that house up, as soon as I uttered the word up, boom, boom. No delay. And there were two men in there working on a gas stove or gas heater in the basement. It would come, the details would come up within the next few days. This wasn't very, you know, this was in my town, rural, but probably a mile away from my house, parents' house. And the, I guess the place had filled up with gas and ignited, and those two men in the basement, uh, they got out of the house completely engulfed in flames and um, I heard the grisly details because everybody you know it's a small area people saw it and anybody on the fire team you know everybody knows them and they said these men made it out to the road and that's as far as they made it and they burned to death they weren't even recognizable and I could go into other details that I remember because, you know, I'm 14 years old. And when people tell you things like that, it sticks in your head. So that's the story. And I never felt like I was responsible for that. Though, given my past, that I was kind of psychic. I kind of, you know, you've heard some of my stories on this channel. But I, I'm not the sort of person to hurt anybody. I definitely didn't hate anybody. I didn't have anything evil going on. I loved God. So I was kind of shocked. And I really didn't know what, and to this day, I really don't know what to think of that. If it was a coincidence, it was one in a, what, 500 million? I don't know. I think maybe possibly that because it was a big event with the loss tragic loss of two people dying they weren't they were fairly young men dying a grisly untimely death 
maybe I picked up on that. And, you know, my psyche picked up that the house was going to blow up. And, you know, because I hadn't been thinking those thoughts, I just blurted it out out of nowhere. He's careful. Got to look for motorcycles too. Especially when you get older. You don't see things sometimes. It doesn't register. I'm getting older. Yeah, I think maybe my psyche picked up on that there was going to be an event like that that was going to happen. The house was going to blow up. And so I just maybe bubbled up and it came out as I want you to blow that house up. Just play pretending. Man, I never forgot that. That was in the, the, the tragedy that followed. It's, I swear, as soon as I said the words, blow that house up, boom, boom, that quick after I said up. Well, maybe a couple of seconds. No more than five seconds later, heard the explosions, but it would have taken that long for the uh, sound to travel. I'd say as soon as I said the words, blow the house up, the house blew up. So, there's an odd one for you. I don't know if there's anything spiritually redeeming in this. Uh, uh, you know, not that I can think of. All right. Well, my shopping's done. I'm headed back home. And I've thought about that uh, dark tale of tragedy. And uh, I'm going to let this car go by me. It is either a, is one of two things, uh, as far as I'm c concerned. I mean, it was a tragedy. And I'm going to see if I can find it on Google when I get home, but I don't, it was a long time ago, before the internet. With me, it was either a colossal coincidence or um, I think maybe I picked up on something psychic um, that that house was going to explode and there was going to be loss of life and it just bubbled up um, I want you to blow that house up because I knew the house is going to blow up but you know, I wasn't thinking anything malicious. You know what I'm saying? I was just playing. My friend and I just playing around. Uh, we're just walking in the summer. So it was either a, a massive coincidence or something you might say psychic. I don't know. Psychic. That's kind of a blanket term. I maybe, I think maybe I picked up you know, that the place was going to blow up. And uh, it just manifested with me saying what I said, being, you know, a kid, maybe 14, innocent kid, really. By today's standards, I would say. All right, I just thought I'd let you know that I did look on the Internet to see if I could find any record of this tragedy. Uh, that I told in this story, and I could not find anything. I mean, this happened decades ago. So, that's that. All right, thank you. All right, um... Just so I'd let you know, I did search, search the internet and I couldn't find a thing on this accident that happened like 45 years ago. So I couldn't find anything. I looked. Take care. God bless.